Good morning, everyone. Okay. My apologies for being late. The minister in Mullabrat and Kilcluny has had to isolate and uh, he needed someone to take the service for him this morning. So I have, and I didn't have to preach. He went up on the screen and he preached uh, to them. But uh, I led the service for him. So I couldn't get any quicker from uh, there to here this morning. And it didn't help that there was somebody going a wee bit too slow in front of me in a queue it built up. But I knew that you would all understand. Uh, so thank you very much. It's lovely to see you. It's a great number of people. I think it is my first time back since I've been away on holiday, so it's really lovely to be back uh, worshipping with you here in Bestbrook. The Lord be with you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. We begin by singing hymn number 59, New Every Morning is the Love. Merciful Lord, 
grant to your faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we stand together. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth will proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. For our psalm, we're turning to Psalm 84 on page 689. Psalm 84 on page 689. And we read in half verses. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts! My soul has a desire and longing to enter the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh rejoice in the living God. The sparrow has found her a house, and the swallow a nest where she may lay her young. At your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God, blessed are they who dwell in your house. They will always be praising you. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, in whose heart are the highways to Zion, who going through the barren valley find there a spring, and the early rains will clothe it with blessing. They will go from strength to strength and appear before God in Zion. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Listen, O God of Jacob. Behold our Defender, O God, and look upon the face of your anointed. For one day in your courts is better than a thousand. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of ungodliness. For the Lord God is both sun and shield. He will give grace and glory. No good thing shall the Lord withhold from those who walk with integrity. O Lord God of hosts, yes. blessed are those who put their trust in you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Please be seated. First reading is from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians, chapter 6, beginning at verse 10. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armour of God, so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armour of God, so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day, and having done everything to stand firm. Therefore, and stand therefore, and fasten the belt of truth around your waist, and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times, in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly, so I must speak. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We read together the words of the Jubilate on page 104. Please stand. O oh, shout to the Lord in triumph, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his face with 
songs of joy. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us, and we are his. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Come into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his holy name. For the Lord is good. His loving mercy is forever. His faithfulness throughout all generations. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Please be seated. Second reading is from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 6, beginning at verse 56. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them, just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father. So whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate, and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue in at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life, but among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe, and who was the one that would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We read together the Te Deum, part one, on page 106. Please stand. We praise you, O God. We acclaim you as the Lord. All creation worships you, the Father everlasting. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, the cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the holy church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all praise the Holy Spirit, Advocate and Guide. We're going to sing again, and this time we're singing hymn number 112. There is a Redeemer, Jesus, God's own Son. Hymn number 112.
and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. I'm going to say something that definitely two or three people might like to hear. It's back to school time this week for some children, young people and teachers. It's like opening a new chapter in a book. As our lives progress, we build upon past events and past lessons. They shape our thinking and our actions. The thinking we put into practice in turn shapes our future. In many cases, a person would not be who they are today if they had not gone through what they went through. Even bad or sad experiences can teach us valuable life shaping lessons when we process them correctly. However, we have all made mistakes in our lives. Things that have happened that we regret. If only we could reboot our lives like you can reboot a computer and start afresh. It may be impossible to erase our past, but we can live fresh and new. We can reboot our lives and begin living differently than our past. The words of 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17 tell us, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, all things have become new. What an amazing promise. Our past does not have to define us. With God, all things are new. We can reboot our lives. Our life can change direction and begin being something much better than what it has been. We can be made new. What does the first day of school mean to you? Or what did it mean to you when you were a child? For some people it might bring feelings of dread. For others it might be excitement with the prospect of reconnecting with friends. This time of year is back to school. Or maybe for some people back to church after long summer holidays or even for some people back to church after being away because of the pandemic. This provides us with a natural opportunity in our lives for change. This is our chance for a reboot. In preparation for going back to school we get new school uniforms, new shoes, new pens and pencils, maybe a new school bag, starting off all new. Let's consider starting off this school year with not just a new look, but with a new you. One of the first things our children learn in school is the alphabet. So today, so today I'm going to share the ABC to reboot our lives. A for attitude, B for behaviour, and C for commitment. A for attitude. Our attitude is so much more important than what we wear. Chances are that people will remember our attitude way after they forget what we were wearing. If we want to reboot our lives, start by letting God bring change to our attitude. A big part of our attitude is how we look at other people 
And if our perception of people is tilted a certain way, then we talk about them or treat them in a different way. What does the Bible say about our attitude? 2 Corinthians 5 verse 16 So we have stopped evaluating others from a human point of view. At one time we thought of Christ merely from a human point of view. How differently we know him now. Knowing Christ changes our attitude about him and about others. Without Christ in our lives, we look at others from a worldly perspective. Are they popular? Do they look good? Do they have money? But God changes our perspective. He changes our attitude about people. And how does this change start? Is it in, is it in deciding to treat everyone nice one day? No, not really. Lasting attitude change starts with changing our attitude about Christ. The words of 2 Corinthians 5 verses 14 to 16 in the message version of the Bible tell us, Christ's love has moved me to such extremes. His love has the first and last word in everything we do. Our firm decision is to work from this focused centre. One man died for everyone. That puts everyone in the same boat. He included everyone in his death so that everyone could also be included in his life, a resurrection life, a far better life than people ever lived on their own. Because of this decision, we don't evaluate people by what they have or how they look. We looked at the Messiah that way once and got it wrong, as you know. We certainly don't look at him that way anymore. When we change our attitude towards Jesus, it changes our attitude towards others. Who do you think Jesus is? Do you look at him as a teacher? Do you think he was a fake? Do you think he was a poor carpenter from Galilee with a God complex? Or do you hold him in highest regard as the only son of God who lived a sinless life and died on the cross and overcame death mm -hmm. to rescue us? When we know him for who he really is, it changes us. The perspective of the Corinthian church was changed because they came into a relationship with Christ. They got to know him and it changed everything. Change our attitude towards others. But we need to start by making sure our attitude is right towards Christ. Reboot our life by rebooting our attitude. Our attitude towards Christ and our attitude towards others. B. B is for behaviour. We all know the words actions speak louder than words. We can all talk the talk, but if we aren't walking out our beliefs with what we do, our words are empty. In the words of James 2, verses 17 to 20. So you see, faith by itself isn't enough unless it produces good deeds. It is dead and useless. Now someone may argue, some people have faith, others have good deeds. But I say, how can you show me faith if you don't have good deeds? I will show you my faith by my good deeds. You may say you have faith, for you believe that there is one God, good for you. Even the demons believe this, and they tremble in terror. How foolish. Can't you see that faith without good deeds is useless? James, in this passage, is clearly telling us here that we are mistaken if we think saying you believe in God is enough. Real faith 
brings real action. When we truly believe in God, our action will reflect that belief and bring glory to God. Do you think that means a Christian will always do the right thing? Do these verses mean that when someone fails in doing good, that they don't believe in God? Not at all. Everyone, each and every one of us, falls short. The reality is that we are human and we make mistakes. Until we reach heaven, we won't be without failures. But that isn't an excuse not to try to do the right thing. We have a responsibility to God and to others to live out our faith. Our actions will either turn people to God or they will turn them away from God. Our behaviour matters. Our actions matter. And the ABC to rebooting our lives. A for attitude. B for behaviour. And C for commitment. Joshua 24 verses 14 and 15. So now, fear God. Worship him in total commitment. Get rid of the gods your ancestors worshipped on the far side of the river and in Egypt. You worship God. If you decide that it's a bad thing to worship God, then choose a God you'd rather serve and do it today. Choose one of the gods your ancestors worshipped from the country beyond the river or one of the gods of the Amorites on whose land you're now living. As for me and my family, we'll worship God. God is a jealous God, and rightly so. He wants our total commitment. He doesn't want us to serve him half-heartedly. He wants total and, commit and complete commitment. In these verses, Joshua was talking to the people of Israel who had been delivered from slavery in Egypt and then wandered through the desert until they finally entered the promised land. They were in the habit of adopting the gods or idols of the pagan people around them and worshipping them. Then when God's judgment would come on them for serving false gods, they'd turn back to our true God for a time. They were wishy-washy, back and forth. But God wants total commitment from his people, from each of us. God doesn't want us to share, he doesn't want to share you or me with the world. He wants all of us. He wants every part of us. So as we move into a new season, in our schools, in our church family, let's do an A, B, C reboot. A, our attitude towards Christ and others. B, our behaviour. Let our actions glorify God and say, let's commit ourselves to God. Let's give him our all. Let us pray. Today we recommit ourselves to you, Lord. With God, all things can be made new. Thank you for this reminder and opportunity to reboot our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, we stand together to proclaim our beliefs in the words of the Apostles' Creed on page 112. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, 
born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and grant your government wisdom. Let your ministers be clothed with righteousness, and let your servants shout for joy. O Lord, save your people and bless those whom you have chosen. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and let your glory be over all the earth. O God, may clean our hearts within us, and renew us by your Holy Spirit. In the Collect for today, the twelfth Sunday after Trinity. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray and to give more than either we desire or deserve. Pour down upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which your conscience is afraid, and giving us those good things which we are not worthy to ask, save through the merits and meditation of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. And second collect for peace. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your protection, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We join together in the words of the third Collect for Grace on page 114. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and ever-living God, we give you thanks for bringing us safely to this day. Keep us from falling into sin or running into danger. And in all things, guide us to know and do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And I continue in prayer. Thank you, God, for everything. Thank you, God, for everything the big things and the small, for every good gift comes from God, the giver of them all. And all too often we accept, without any thanks or praise, the gifts God sends as blessings each day in many ways. And so at this time we offer up a prayer to thank you, God, for giving us a lot more than our share. First, thank you for the little things that often come our way, the things we take for granted and don't mention when we pray. The unexpected courtesy, the thoughtful, kindly deed. A hand reached out to help us in the time of sudden need. Oh, make us more aware, dear God, of little daily graces that come to us with sweet surprise from never dreamed of places. Then thank you for the miracles we are much too blind to see and give us new awareness of our many gifts from thee. And help us to remember that the key to life and living is to make each prayer a prayer of thanks and each day a day of thanksgiving. We pray for Afghanistan. 
all loving God. Your hands have fashioned every corner of this planet and the beautiful land of Afghanistan is as precious as every other place your children call home. We grieve today for those who grieve over Afghanistan, the people who call it home. The people exiled are suddenly having to leave and the men and women from other countries who have made sacrifices in recent years in the cause of that country's future. We remember with sadness the loss of lives of military personnel during the years of this country's involvement in Afghanistan. Conscious of the questions that must today be troubling the minds of those in our community who were bereaved, those who were wounded in operations, and those who were forever changed by experiences suffered there. We pray for peace, dignity, freedom and confidence for the men, women and children of Afghanistan. For courage, vision and generosity within the international community responding to such need. And for tranquility of mind among our own service community and its wider family. In the name of Jesus Christ. The peace giver, we pray. Amen. And as our schools prepare to return for a new school year, compassionate and heavenly Father, we lift our schools before you, the teachers, staff, governors, education authority and department of education staff. Help us to manage teaching and caring for all pupils in this time of fear, isolation and social distancing. When there are no right answers, be the light for the path ahead. Make schools a safe haven, a place where staff and children can find comfort, reassurance and support. In your son's precious name. Amen. We thank God for our family. To your mercy and care, O God of love, we commit all who are dear to us, and especially those within our family circle. Watch over them and protect them from all harm. As we think of our family, we remember also your family and the body of this church. Grant your blessing, O God, to the churches in this grouping, and prosper our endeavours to make our province one in which your name is known and honoured. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. An eternal God, whose Son Jesus Christ bore our grief and carried our sorrows, hear us as we pray for those in need. The hungry and the homeless, the sick and the dying, the elderly, the lonely and the bereaved. And in our prayers today, we pray especially for the Mulholland and Mali families on the death of Rosemary's father. May they know your presence with them at this time and in the days ahead. We bring our time of prayer to a close by joining together in the words of the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Now, I just have one announcement for us today, and it's about the High Street Voucher Scheme. So the Department of, of Economy for Northern Ireland has announced their High Street Voucher Scheme, a £100 card, which will open in September to anyone over the age of 18. And you will require each person to apply online. We appreciate that some parishioners are not internet savvy. So the parish secretary has agreed to assist with the application process in our parish hall to allow non-internet users to make their application. That's very good of you, Trevor. Thank you. If you are interested in obtaining their support, this support, please contact the parish secretary who will keep you updated with his plans and what you need to bring along to make an application when the time comes. Well, I have to say, I think that's very generous of Trevor indeed. Very, very good. Um, and I encourage you all to uh, take him up on that offer if you need his help. Now we're going to finish off by singing hymn number 306.
Let all the world in every corner sing. Hymn number 360. with us all this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen.